So what is Gwent and is it any fun? I'm going to try and answer those two questions in this coming up video. Um, normally I do Magic the Gathering videos, but I always like to find a change of pace game to play. I play a lot of Magic. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. Um, but I've been dabbling with some other card games, and I don't know if you guys watch another Magic player. His name's Merchant. He's pretty good at Magic. He came from Gwent. He used to play Gwent, and then he quit uh, this game while it was in beta due to some design changes. So I was kind of on the fence about it. And then uh, I just you know, said, what the heck? I heard that the uh, premium artwork in the, in the cards itself was really good. So I wanted to check it out. I did that, and uh, I actually really, really like the gameplay. So um, for me, it's kind of fun. Uh, and I wanted to show some of the elements that this game brings to the table. Um, now, the thing about this game is that there's not a really good spot to put the camera. So for this video, I am going to go ahead and hide. Let me see. I think that hides the camera. So that way it's just going to be me talking over the gameplay and uh, what I'm seeing like as I play through the game and how the game actually plays out and works for me. So the first thing I want to show you guys is the artwork. So if we go to, I think Deck Builder is probably the easiest way. Um, now, right when you log in, there's a lengthy tutorial you play through. It's probably going to take you about a half an hour to play through like five or six games. But then the first thing I'm sure you noticed right away is that, wait a minute, these cards are fully animated. They are. Um, the first row of cards is what you have is like your leader, which if you play Hearthstone, it's very similar to a hero power. Um, but it's like a leader ability that they have. And all of the leader's cards are fully animated. I have a couple of them here. So this is, I don't know if. This is pronounced like crotch and crate. I don't know how to say that, but whatever. Um, this is, game is based on the the Witcher series, and I'm not very familiar with the Witcher series at all. I just found this game because I like to play card games, so this came out. And you can see, like, the artwork is is pretty awesome on the cards. Like, they really did a great job. Now, when you play the leaders, they don't play out like cards. They play out more like avatars, but they have these abilities. Uh, like, order is kind of like a tap ability in Magic. Uh, cooldown, obviously, is how long it takes in turns before you can use it again. Um, and then the the color that you see up top here, this is a faction. So the, he is from, the factions have names that I have not memorized, I probably never will. Uh, but whatever, he's like from the purple faction. So um, each card has a regular and a premium version of it. So here's this guy. This is an old spear tip, okay? This is old spear tip right here. He's got a power of 12, and in this game, it plays out a lot differently than in any other game I've played. So it's not like Magic, it's not like Hearthstone. It's a different type of card game, it's a lot more strategy-based, and uh, and there's there's like no attacking, there's no life totals. It's very interesting to play. I actually like it as kind of a change of pace game where you don't have to worry about getting aggroed so bad in the beginning that you just can't win. Um, and then the 15 down here is the point total that he costs towards your deck. Each deck has a maximum resource of 166 points. He takes up 15 points. But now uh, you can craft this guy for 800 shards or card pieces or whatever they call this. Or you can craft a premium version for a lot more resources. Now, card game developers should take notes on this. This is game is touted as a free-to-play game, like free-for-all. Anybody can do it. And I believe them because there are people who will spend money just to get all these premium cards. They're black and white because I don't have them, They're, but they'll be in full color if I do have them, right? Um, there are pay people who will pay plenty of money to have the Zoltan Scoundrel Dwarf in full animation rather than like regular. Like I, I would just do this one. That's how I would do it. I wouldn't worry so much about whether or not it's in full animation or not. Uh, maybe eventually I would do the full animation of these cards, but probably not right away. And I think this is where the money is, even for games like Magic in the arena, where every other card is just a normal card, but if you want to spend the money, if there's like a, a paid resource like gems or something like that, you can pay a whole lot of gems to get all the foils, and the foils are well worth it because either they're fully animated or it's not just like a gold border, it's something something a lot cooler than that. Now that's the first thing I noticed about this game, was that, wait a minute, this artwork is better than any other card game's artwork I've ever seen. Um, the second thing I noticed about this game was after the tutorial, there was this, um, this system here in the reward book, and I was like, wait a minute, what's this reward book thing? This was a little overwhelming at first. Uh, so here's the tutorial that you'll play through. All of these are just little you know, two, three, four, there's like six matches that you'll play through. 
and it kind of teaches you how to play the game but throughout that process you get actual rewards oh we can't see what they were um, but these open chests like you get rewards as you play through the game you get certain cards you get certain uh, resource points uh, like these you get stars which are um, points to spend in this book here that we're looking at or is used to buy packs so here in a minute we're going to open 20 packs just because i feel like opening 20 packs today um i haven't opened any packs yet that's why i wanted to cut this video i'm kind of excited about this you know i haven't had a chance to actually dive in i was kind of weighing this like well do i open packs and not show the guys or or should i wait and then see what happens if we get more um you know because if you're like me then you want to kind of see it before you get into it just to make sure it's something that's going to be worth your time and I do have, I've got 815 scraps already, 520 whatever powders. I don't know what the hell these things are. Um, and then this little barrel, this is a keg. This is like a card pack. They call them kegs in this game, but whatever. It's for all intents and purposes, it's a card pack. Um, but I was playing through this set here, this, these Nilf guards. I had a quest to win five games as this faction and I suck at this faction. So I spent a lot of my points to get this leader over here. Uh, uh, John Calviet. And then I got this guy over here, Usurper, um, because he's he's got a cool ability where on the start of the game he disables the enemy leader for the duration of the battle. I feel like as a new player that's pretty good because if they have this really rock star hero or or enemy leader, uh, it, it disables for the, uh, the rest of the battle, so I don't have to worry about it. And the artwork is kind of cool. He's like, hey, you dead? Yep, he's dead. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Um, but this, I wish other games had something like this, where I could take some points, like it's another way for me to progress through the game. Um, and this game just came out in October, so this could be something that we start to see. But for all the factions, right, I can't, uh, Skoateel, I can't pronounce all the names, but for all the factions, you could take your reward points that you get and spend your reward points on different things, get 50 ore, get another 50 ore for two points and then for five more points you get two card packs that have just this faction in there 120 meteorite power and then 160 scraps like it's pretty awesome to jump through or actually i think those are divided rewards among all three of these chests on this side but you can kind of see how you can progress through this part of the game also without just having to play in the ranked arena and win or lose games or up your rating or not have to worry about your rating so i really like how they're doing that you can win all of these uh leaders well you can i guess you, you unlock them you don't have to win them right so you just even if you lose you get these points and then you go you know you can pick whichever one you want go in that direction on the board this is very similar to uh, a lot of games that we've played in the past where you just like you know choose your own however you want to do it with your own points and you get a ton of these points as you play through the game so that was the the second thing i noticed about this game that was really awesome like it's it's just another thing to do within the game client that you don't have to leave um, it's got a robust social program so i can see who i've recently played against and then i can add them as friends or not uh, i think having just even this kind of an interface in, in magic would, would do it for me i don't know why why we don't have that yet um but i really want to see that implemented in magic the gathering there's obviously there's a quest system where i've got to win five matches as the skoa teal faction this is what we'll do here in a few minutes and i'll show you the gameplay maybe we'll just do one game because quite honestly i'm not very good at this game just yet and i'm okay with that i don't have to be be all that good um, at first i will kind of learn but so far even through the learning curve of this game it has been super fun for me so let's do something real quick together. Let's go to the shop and let's spend some, I guess they call it ore. So I think I can buy card kegs is what they call them for a hundred ore. So yeah, let's buy 20. This is, and I've only been playing this game for a couple of days. So the fact that I can buy 20 ore right, or 20 kegs packs is pretty cool. Pay now, is it really gonna just, take 2,000 of my ore and go to town. Cool. I got a contract complete, which is going to give me reward points. So I can take those reward points into that single player grid we were just looking at and and spend them on more cards, more ore, more. So it, it's kind of a cool system there. There's a new expansion coming out called Crimson Curse. That comes out at the end of the month. Um, for a game that just came out in October, there's already been two expansions. There's been the Thronebreaker, which is uh, a, a purchasable expansion 
though all of the cards you can get for free if you just spend your reward points. So if you go here to the Thronebreaker series, you can get all of the Thronebreaker cards. Heroes, um, there are no, I think there's just a few heroes. Um, there's no, uh, there, there aren't like Thronebreaker card packs, which is nice. I like that. It's, it's awesome. And then each of these heroes has a, like it's locked, but if each of the heroes has a, like a 31, this is a 31 point three chests available for like scrolls. I don't know exactly what all the rewards are, but there's actually a ton of, of like side quests for me to do, not just quests to go play 20 lands, but actual side quests for me. Like, I don't even know what this guy is. Vernon, the, the Rooch, like he's got his own quest. And then as you do the quest, like the language, oh, here, I'll show you guys. <laughs> this is cool. As you do the quest, what have I done? Nilfgaard? Uh, like the quest actually like starts to be readable. So, so it looks like this at first, right? But then because I've opened one of the treasure chests, I can see that Nilfgaardians interpret loyalty quite differently than the rest of the continent. So like you can actually learn some of the lore within the game client using the quest systems that you've, you've been working on. Um, for the life of me, I don't know, I know why Magic doesn't implement this. They've got 25 years of lore, but uh, it's just really not present in the game environment other than the cards. Uh, which is which is possible because here we go by buying cards. I have got more rewards points for that system You get a ton of these you get a ton of these rewards points. They throw them at you And it's pretty cool Spend a thousand or I did Cool, so let's open I think we just click on them Yeah, they show you a card when it when it loads but uh, it loads pretty fast and you don't always get a chance to look at um, look at what that card does. Now here's something that I made a mistake on. Uh, these are the factions. So this is a faction called Monsters. Uh, I got a fork tail. That's kind of cool. It damages all of the units by one. Lyrian Cavalry. Okay. When you play a unit with orders, boost self by one. That's neat. This is um, that faction we were just talking about, Scoatil, I think. Otherwise green. I like Mark Mahakam Dwarf or the this guy. So this is my third copy So now I'm gonna find out what you do with a third copy of your cards And a, and a nice dull Bluthana bomber. I also want to know if I can get premium cards just by buying the, the kegs. Oh, looks like we can Looks like we can there we go. So that answers that question uh, I'm just gonna be greedy and take the premium guy here the ancient foglet Wait, after two allied turns, I'm gonna turn damage all enemy units on the row with the most units by two. Or you could do ambush order. I like crushing trap too, but you know what? I'm gonna take this premium guy just because I don't know enough about the game and I'm kinda greedy. So you get to pick your rare in this game. So see how that how that goes down? Um, and we just open the next keg. And we're gonna read through a lot of the cards together. A Farseer? Cool. Deploy is like a battle cry if you're familiar with Hearthstone. Um, ranged is the row that you put them on. There's a melee and a ranged row, like a location to put them on. Uh, so if, if you deploy the Farseer in the ranged row, then you reveal a random card from your deck, and if it's a special card, um, it boosts by two. So it goes from four to a six. I do not know if that's any good, honestly. Slave Driver. Damages an enemy by two and increases damage by one for each locked unit. Locked is like, I guess, like silence, but not really. It's just they're locked. They can't do anything else. They're like tapped. It's like taps a unit and they've, been, they've never untap in this game. Wyvern damages a unit by two. It's got Thrive, which is like any, like a, like a pelt collector, <laughs> right? Uh, anytime a unit with higher power comes into the battlefield, it gets plus one. And a good old scout. Remove a row effect from this row. That's pretty cool. And premiums. Okay. Boy. I really don't know what we're going for here. I think I'm going to go with this runestone. Create and play a bronze Northern Realms faction card. Alright. I'm just going to pick the middle one, I suppose. That's what I'll do, because I just don't know enough about the game and the cards just yet. The, the initial set comes out with 500 cards, 
Bridge Troll. Okay, I like that. Deathwing Arbalist. It's too much for me to read right now. <laughs> too long, didn't read. So far I haven't seen any premium, like, non-rares. Yep, I like the Dwarven Agitator. Oh no, I... Colano Harpy is pretty cool too. I'm just gonna grab all the premium cards that I can right now. <laughs> Such wow wows. Because uh, I like the premium cards in this game more than anything else I've seen in a game to this point. Doblith on a Sentry, huh? That's cool. So the rows are important in this game as far as like the strategy goes behind Iris's champions, uh, companions. I mean, this this uh, the brown color is like a neutral color, so it's available with every faction. It's pretty cool. Draw a card from your of your choice, then discard a random card. Kind of like kind of like this, and it's got a power of five. That's really nice, actually. Boost all warrior allies by one. That's kind of cool too. Destroy the next unit played by your opponent. I like Pitfall Trap the best. That's pretty cool. It's just like you thought you had a dude, but you don't. He died. And it destroys them. In this game, that's pretty powerful. Wild Hunt Warrior. Damage the enemy by the number of wild hunts. I'm not sure what that is. Trebuchet. That's super awesome in this game. Fire Scorpion. Also super awesome. I've seen, I've lost to this card before, this Harpy Egg. Oh, it's a premium Harpy Egg, too. Check that out. Oh, close. It's got that blue. No, nope, that's just because I my mouse over it. But it is definitely animated. So you can even get premium cards just by opening packs. That's terrific. If played from the deck, boost self by force. That's not played from your hand, which is, which is tough to make happen. Brockvar Archer, damage an enemy by the amount of units, damage units on their side, that's not too bad. I like these red, uh, this is called Monsters. I did really well. Oh, you know what, I think I have one of these. Oh, it's telling me these are new, this is new. I have one Ancient Foglet already, which was animated, I remember picking up the animated one. Um, they're a premium, so that's why this is a green box. It means I have a premium one of these guys. So I think that's the better pick here. Just because I'm in collection building mode, I do want to have more effective capabilities in my decks than not. So that's kind of neat. This card sucks right here to to play against. Oh, it's it's neutral also. That's pretty good. Lyrian Cavalry again. That's pretty good. Fryheed Dragoons. These you get. Well, I have you get one of these in the collection. So I already have one of those. Wild Hunt. Oh, by the Wild Hunt units. This is Wild Hunt Warrior. And that's the third copy of that card, so we'll figure out what happens to the third copies. Destroy all artifacts. That's pretty cool. I'm going to grab that. Remove all statuses from all units on the battlefield. I don't like that as much as... Well, I guess all artifacts would be uh, just as bad, right? Because my artifacts would get destroyed too, but if I'm not playing any artifacts, I think that's okay. I'm going to go with it. Opening packs, my initial impression in this game is it's a lot funner to pick my rare. Absolutely. Siege support, give two charges to a machine ally. So this is a machine, it's got one charge. So if you played siege support and then you could give this, not this machine, because it's a different faction. Uh, so it would have to be the same blue faction here, but you could give two charges to the same faction's unit. Um, if you control an artifact, boost self by three. This is a machine, not an artifact. So these, this isn't even a combo here. Good to know. Elven Scout, whenever an allied trap is triggered. We just looked at a trap that I picked. I think it was called Pitfall. Whenever a trap is triggered, boost self by two. So that would be this creature here. If there is a dwarf in this row, summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this row. So this only works if you have two in your deck. Damage a unit by one for every ship in your hand. That's kind of cool. These guys are like ship-bound pirate dudes. Boy. 
I'm gonna go with the dwarves. I think the dwarves are the winners here. So right away it feels like you can build kind of a decent starting collection with just the basics. Have a few cards. Got a couple bridge trolls already. Cockatrice, that's kind of neat I suppose. Rock Barrage, that looks like it's about to hurt. Demeridium Shackles, this has turned out to be a pretty cool card so far. I have Ancient Foglets, I'm good there. I have a Raging Bear. So I don't like how this damages people when it comes out, so let's get Crow's Eye. Okay, and already after eight packs, we're starting to see some... Some, like, obvious choices in the rares, even. That's kind of encouraging. Why is this purple? Is it just the rarity of it all? It's not premium. So if you right-click on them, or just... Yeah, you right-click on them, it opens up this bigger window for you. Deploy melee, spawn the Guardian, and place it at the top of your opponent's deck. What's the Guardian? Hmm. I don't know if I like that idea so much. Necker Warrior with Thrive. Heimei Protector. Whenever an adjacent unit takes damage. Okay, that's kind of cool. I have a few Alchemists already. I wonder if there is no limit on the cards that you get. I like Elven Swordmaster. Uh, you damage an enemy by one, right? So every every other turn you can damage an enemy by one. And whenever you play an elf, it decreases it, its own cooldown by one turn. So if every turn you play an elf, you can also trigger this ability and then deal one damage to creatures. It's pretty awesome. And in this game, see this deploy damage self by four for this uh, tier search veteran? That's so detrimental in this game because it's all about the power level. Marion Infantry, that's kind of cool. Drummond and Warmonger, okay, all right, purple. I would open your packs before playing a lot of games uh, in hindsight. Well, I wanted to do it this way on purpose. I'm going to go with like all the elves I can, I think. Um, just because there seems to be a lot of elf synergy, at least in the cards I have now. And, and I think I like that better. Martyrium. Damage unit by three, then boost it by nine. That's weird. Uh, damage an enemy by the number of units in its other row. I've got another one of those guys. That doesn't work out so good. Trebuchets. That's cool. Combat engineer. Hey, it's a premium combat engineer. He's like, hey guys, anybody see my scissors? You control an artifact. Boost self by three. That's cool. Bearman boosts a beast ally by two, so that's kind of neat. Play a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard. That's like bronze is like a common, I guess. Uh, but it's not that there is a rarity level. See the gems? These are blue, these are rare. Um, there is also bronze and gold cards in this game, a system which I don't fully understand just yet. I like Experimental Frenzy, I mean, Experimental Remedy. I think that'll work out pretty good. An organic? That's kind of neat, I suppose. There's a lot of, uh... There's a lot of, like, buffs that you get throughout the game, in this game anyway. Damage an enemy by three with reach of two. That's kind of cool, except she's only got a one power, which sucks. Hawker support. Yeah, that's neat. Recruit. I think I'm going to take the Witcher, right? On allied turn start, if this is the only unit in your graveyard, summon it to a random allied row. That's really awesome. Yeah, we're going with the Witcher there, without, without a doubt. Yeah. And it's a 
amber in color gem there. I wish I knew. Uh, there is no system that tells you in the game client what the gems are, so I'd have to look that up, which I you know, would do. I would have done that prior to opening the packs, but I did not realize I would get such great cards in my packs. Fire Scorpion. Okay, so we've seen all these cards before. Griffin, Trumbled Shield Maiden. I want to get the Crushing Trap. I think the traps are... Oh, there's a Griffin. That's really cool looking, though. But I'm going to go with the traps. I feel like the traps have been killing me so much that uh, I should get them. And at this point, I mean, I got seven seven packs to go. I feel like it's highly possible to have a most enjoyable free-to-play experience with this game without having to feeling like you are losing to card advantage just because people have spent more money in the game than you have. Swears? Death Mold? I like Death Mold. That sounds like a, a cool mage to have. Damage an enemy by the amount Death Mold is boosted. <laughs> yep. A lot of boosts happening, so that'll work out really well. Drowner? Damage an enemy by two and move it to the other row. That's cool. I have one, though. Maybe I haven't seen him yet. Imperia Brigade. Okay, lots of cool stuff. Mahakamail. A Sage, huh? Whenever you play a special card, boost it by two. So instead of saying, like, alchemy here, it would say special. Uh, so I'd have to, like, plan that deck out pretty heavily. This is Old Spear Tip, who's asleep. He's just got a power of nine and no ability. Mm. Django Fett, is that really what we're seeing here? How funny. What's Bloodthirst? So trigger this ability. Number of damaged units. Oh, so Bloodthirst of one. If there's a, a single damaged unit, then he can lock an enemy unit, which basically taps him forever and they don't do anything. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take... Uh, Jenge Fret, that's kind of cool. Sure, buddy. Dwarven Skirmisher, got one of those. A Fiend, don't have any of those. Brockvar Hunter. This is like... This is like Oliver Queen. <laughs> when he's on the island. Okay. I'll take it, that's cool. Crow's Eye. Oh, I like the look of that instinctively. Slizzard. Trigger a Bronze Unit's Death Wish ability. Death Wish is like Death Rattle in Hearthstone. It's a very similar thing. Deploy if played from the deck. Boost self by four. I don't, I'm not in love with Kid Weenie Knight. Consume. An, oh, so Consume kills the enemy unit and adds its power to like the Slizzard's unit. Consume is a cool ability. We're going with Slizzard. A lot of uh, elf cards here. Elf War Dancer. Waylay, if there's an elf on the battlefield destroyed, that's terrific. I love that. I love these destroy a random enemy or destroy units, period, because because units just get gigantic and it, they, they're just they're pains for me to deal with. Transform an allied unit that is not a cursed knight into a cursed knight without changing its power that's not good on create great sword whenever an enemy on the opposite row takes damage boost self by one that's terrific right there that is terrific okay that's a good card that's another scout i'll take it slave driver i'll take it demune pirate captain Bloodthirst of two, damage an enemy by three with reach of two. That's not great. There's other great, better cards that do that. But well, this looks different, doesn't it? Or maybe it doesn't. Yep, taking the Mahakam Volunteers. So here's a tactic, right? We've seen a few cards that rely on tactics to be played. So it looks like out of 20 kegs, 20 card packs, I've got, I don't know five or six premium cards even and it's only taken me seriously like two days to get that many or now a lot of that probably comes from the initial 
uh, the initial walkthrough, the initial, um, you know, the the tutorial. Rahid Sappers. If you control an elf, destroy an enemy artifact. That's kind of cool. For every allied turn, if you control fewer units, boost elf by one. That's pretty cool. This looks complicated. Damage unit by one. If Larian Sassy is boosted, damage unit by three instead with a breach of two. Oh, that's an order, so not a battle cry. Or a, you know, deploy ability. But I'm going with this green color here. I'm really liking what we're doing here. And the last one. All right, what do we get in the last one? A damned sorceress. Tamarian drummers. Boost an ally by one and give it zeal. Zeal is pretty cool. Zeal is like charge. Uh, this is like a, a rare, I suppose. It's a toad prince. Consume a unit with power three or less. But it's not that premium that I like so much. Another sage. That's pretty cool. And it's a waylay. These are so cool, these premium cards. Yeah. Which I also like the card too, so that's pretty great. And then we're all out of kegs to open. Something else I like about what this game does for me is... Now we have to click the back button because this is also built for Xbox and PlayStation. Um, so if you play on consoles, you can also play this game on consoles as well. Um, the reason everything's a button is because it's like you can arrow down to like, you know, whatever the, the command is going to be. But I believe you can click on your name and... Okay, so this is my progress into the collection so far. So collection progress... Yeah, and we're gonna go with all sets. Yep, this is every card printed right now. I've got 12 neutrals out of 144, uh, 21 greens, 22 reds. Like you can see after just a couple of days, I'm like 20% into the entire collection, which is pretty cool. If I go to the deck builder again, I can look at the green deck. So we'll go to this... Uh, Scoatiel starter deck. That's just what I'm playing with. I haven't, haven't messed with it. And we'll go with all of the owned cards. And now I can clearly see that I have a, quite a few more owned cards. Oh, this looks like a good one to play here. I'll have to mess with this a little bit offline and see what the best options are for me. The blue diamond means that they're new cards. Uh, they're all going to be blue diamonds, right? Because I just got all these cards. And I wonder what we do with... What happened to that third copy? So I'll have to figure that out too. That's something on my list to figure out what we do with that third copy. But let's move on now to the gameplay. So my quest is to win games, and this is like the second quest I've gotten so far. It's to win five matches as the faction Skoatil. I've got to do a, a full arena run, which I know nothing about at this point, but I will do that. So I've got to win five matches as faction Skoatil. So there's my Skoatil starter deck. We're just going to play a classic ranked game. I don't know if I can do any other play options at this point. And I will explain everything that I do and my thoughts behind it. So we are both playing probably the same... This my my opponent here looks like he's higher level than me. We're playing the same uh, leader as they call it. So this is a bone talisman. It boosts all my allies by one. Uh, I don't feel like I have enough allies to take advantage of having both. So we'll mulligan this out just like we do in Hearthstone, which I like getting an ally there. I don't want both thunderbolts, and I want okay. So that's perfect. This leader boosts all units in my hand by one. Which I think I will do because I've got two, three, four, five. I've got six units. That's worth six points. I've got to get to 20 points. Oh, no, no. I don't have to get to 20 points. That's a lie. Whoever has the most points uh, at the end of, of a round wins that round. Each of us drew 10 cards. So he's down to nine cards. I've got 10 cards. Um, this, this is it. You don't draw a card at the start of your turn, you play these cards and whoever has more points wins. I'm going to use my leader's ability. It's a one-shot deal for the whole game, so I just gave all of these units plus one. I feel like that was a good move, so here's my one of my defender dwarfs that I was talking about earlier. I'm going to put him down. Now, if he's boosted, he gets one more power at the end of the turn, so now it's, it's six to fourteen, uh, but he had 
Vesemer was one of the witchers that he plays, which summons two more witchers at 3-3 or 3 power. And then he's got this buff. If you go first, you get a buff that you... Uh, listen, don't save the five-point buff. I tried that once. It does go away at the end of the round. Each game consists of three rounds. And at the end of this round, we are going to draw three cards and then move on after that. So he damages my, my defender, which now removes his ability to to uh, boost himself by one because he's boosted. But I have this card, Peasant Militia, which I will deploy. And then the battle cry is to give a guy plus two, or the deploy ability. So now I gave my defender plus two again. Now he's boosted, now he gets his. So it's a, it's a snowball here. Although this was a terrific turn one play, he might be able to win this game. And I do lose a lot. Full disclosure, I'm not trying to say that I'm the best card player and I just always win at everything I do um, but I am going to you know what I'm gonna play another one and then if if this defender should live I can boost him by six with Thunderbolt and then I've got my own witchers to play so I can do Vesemer, Eskel, and Lambert all the same on my side but you never know you know it's like draw ten cards so he's passed which means uh, he's he's probably going to win the game. Although, I'm going to do something silly. I'm going to lose this round on purpose. So this is the end of the round. Now here's, we can see what happens. So he is one. I lost the round. He's It's one to nothing right now. So now at the start of this round, he has to play first. And that's going to give me card advantage, so to speak. Although I did play both of my dwarves, so that's kind of silly. These are five damage to a unit, which I like. I'm going to kick back the Bone Talisman because I only have a handful of units, so I need more units here. Lambert? I don't like Lambert either. Get out of here, Lambert. Why don't I like Lambert there? Because uh, Vesemer summons him anyway. Vraheed Officer is cool, and he has to go first. He's got no choice. So that's a tactic sometimes people do is they'll pass early, indicating that that they are okay with the outcome of the game as it sits. I could have played cards until I had more points and then lost. Um, I would have lost card advantage and then lost the rest of the game hands down. You only draw three cards between matches. There is some strategy behind doing that. I don't fully understand it all, all the time, yet, but I will. So it's still the opponent's... Oh, so he had to... He plays Thunderbolt, but then he doesn't have a unit to play it on, which we'll do the same thing. We'll put Thunderbolt down. These are the rows I was talking about. So you've got your ranged, and you've got your melee row. So here's the melee, here's the ranged. The only strategy behind it is, is if you've got a unit here uh, that takes advantage of being in that row. So I... There's nothing I can do about that guy. He's going to take... He's going to win this whole game just because he's got this dwarf. Going, going bonkers. But let's get our witchers on the table. And why don't we boost them? So now we're looking at it's 16 to 11. He's going to grow and grow and grow. And we've got eight cards left to play. This match will determine the game. So if, if I win this match, but he's got more cards than me by the end of the match, we're in trouble. Now, here, here's something else I've learned about this game. Killing a unit does not matter. So let's see, this this doesn't have any range to it, so we could put this defender here and then kill this guy. Oh, I, I messed up. Oh, so i got to pay attention to that. So if I deploy him in the melee, he damages an enemy. If you deploy him in the ranged, he boosts an ally. So slightly different there. So we're just going to boost the ally. Um, the effect, fundamentally is the same in this case. I could have killed this archer, but there's no reason to because it's still a net swing of three points. So killing a unit doesn't matter. Overkilling a unit doesn't matter. My wolf pack damages a unit by two, which is cool. My Alzer's Thunder damages a unit by five, so here we'll go, we'll kill, we'll kill one of these guys. Right? So either we reduce his points or bring our points up. Um, fundamentally, 
there's no difference between the two unless like we reduce the Markham's defenders points um, those points he gets a net of one every turn anyway so I don't think it really matters if we start reducing this guy he's just gonna grow and grow and grow we're gonna have to let that happen for the most part I really don't want to use my my thunder strikes you know for, for lack of a better term on these smaller minions because I don't get any points for killing a minion. You, you get no reward for killing a creature. Or this, you know, the Dol Blathana Archer, which I now have two of. Thank you. There we go. So now I want to use it on the bear. So he's a six. I can damage him by five. That's a pretty big swing, right? I don't care that he's a one. That, to me, that doesn't much matter. Although this is going to be a tricky game to win, we've we have to get out of this game. I don't have a whole lot of options. I shouldn't have played my second Marhakim Defender. So as I learn the game, I kind of learn some strategies. Like you probably don't want to play both of those guys on turn one, like I initially thought. He's a 16 power unit. That's pretty crazy. Um, I already used that Thunderbolt. So I'm gonna do. This is the funniest. I don't know why this doesn't say potion, but it says swallow. So Lambert's going to swallow whatever, dudes. <laughs> but anyway, he gets six more power. So now it's 23 to 24. Pretty tight game all around. And it's pretty interesting gameplay, like I kind of mentioned earlier. And I like this because you never lose because you draw a mountain. And you never lose because you get out aggroed so quickly that you can't possibly recover. Uh, you, there is aggro in this game if you get up to like 20 points on turn two and then you just start passing. Like that's that does happen. But you can always come back from that in a game like this one. So it is a nice change of pace that I really enjoy. Um, now we're hosed. Now we can't win. But anyway, it's a nice. I, I like it. I really like it. Actually, I like it a lot. Like this game really makes me want to play it uh so we got six points in here if he gets higher than 28 we've lost we lost the game i can't possibly win with his big giant dwarf he's got the prize winning cow all i have is this thunderbolt so i'm gonna have to like retool my decks and stuff but this is basically how um how my games go. now that i got all those cards from opening the packs which i'm kind of glad i did that i just wanted to cover the gameplay real quick and how complex it can be um versus how and then here's the thing i like too i can say hey man that was a good game after all and then we'll go to the next screen i still i didn't win any rounds actually but normally like you can win a round in there uh, and still do good but i don't mind i don't mind showing losses that's okay losses happen all right so he says i did it i played a good game too cool and i got five um card building uh you know currency up here which i like I like that element of this game. I've got 820 currencies. Cart scraps, whatever they call them. I could build, so like, let's just look at a common, for example. Uh, I could build this card if I thought Dandelion Poet would help me out with, with winning games. Uh, actually, this is an expensive one. This is uh, like a legendary. That's pretty funny. He's like, I don't know what I did with my, my ukulele. Anyway. That's cool. Those are my initial impressions of this game. I like it. I'm having fun with it. I think it's a, it's a cool game to play. It's got a ton of potential. There's an expansion coming out in less than, gosh, I think like two weeks it comes out. Two weeks from now, it's the middle of March. Um, so it's got a lot of potential. I'm super excited about getting better at this game, learning as I go along, and kind of what changes I would make to the starter decks for new players. But so far... It's kind of been a pleasure to play. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Do remember to subscribe if you're still watching. Um, I appreciate all the support I'm getting. You guys uh, really making me, giving me the feels, so to speak. Take care. Have a good time.